But um, here we are today, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, to, uh, to talk about how to trade a false breakout. <clears throat> Paul says, uh, hi Paul, good, nice to have met you on Friday uh, uh, and have a good day, thank you. Uh, yes Paul, great to meet you and um, it's uh, uh, also here for me to say that, uh, yeah, thank you to those of you who uh, attended the uh, IX uh, Traders and Investors show in London on uh, Friday. Um, it was great to uh, meet a few of you in particular, like uh, Paul, and also great to see some of you for the uh, first time and uh, we hope that uh, you found it uh, yeah, a, a great day out, okay, lots to, lots to learn, lots to engage with uh, other traders and investors. Investors. Uh, and you know, from myself and from Bikesh and uh, the team at Active Trades, just uh, thank you for turning up and helping make it a, a really, really great day out. So um, it was great to great to be there and to see so many of you. So um, um, with that, as I uh, as I said that uh, on Friday today, I'm going to talk about how to trade a false breakout. So it's uh, one of my own particular favorite kind of trading setups. So we will uh, talk more about that in the educational element of our uh, webinar today. So what should we talk about? Well, as always, we'll have our normal Monday Market Matters introduction, you know, just looking at the uh, the news that we have coming up for us. But our main educational element is talking about, right, well, you know, what is a false breakout or what some people might call a fake out? Um, is it a, either a threat or an opportunity? And what I'm always hoping to do is to sort of uh, share with you some insight that allows you to turn it from being a threat into an opportunity. And then, of course, we'll talk about, well, actually, how can we trade them? Uh, and what I'm going to do today's session on um, false breakouts is uh, I'm going to talk about more of a, a kind of a, um, a, a, a false breakout setup that predictably sort of you know, works at the kind of longer term swing level. So four hour daily, et cetera. But the the basis of it um, would work across any time frame and any instrument. And, and what I'll actually do is um, in one of our future sessions, I'll do a specific intraday um, false breakout session as well. But today's session is a, is, a, is a great is a great introduction. If you're not really sure, OK, about what a false breakout is and should give you something fabulous to, to sort of take away and utilize in your own trading. Um, as always, it would be good to know. Um, for those of you joining us here today for the live session, um, how many of you are aware of what a false breakout is and, and how many of you would utilize them in your own trading at the moment? <clears throat> and if you could uh, just you know, put a comment there in the chat box, that would be uh, appreciated. I, I do recognize for our sessions that we have, uh, you know, not only do we have a, a wide geographical audience, but we also have a wide audience in terms of um, skills and experience. So I appreciate there'll be some people here at the start of the trading journey who, you know, won't really even know what a false breakout is. Well, that's why these sessions are here to, to help educate you and, and others who may have, you know, good experience of being able to recognize and identify them. So um, it would be, as I said, it would be good if you put in the chat box, what's your own experience? Um, you know, that would uh, that be interesting to see, you know, uh, how, uh, how other people have fared with uh, false breakouts. So as always, as I said, we'll talk about how we can trade them. And then as always, we'll switch across to the live markets, have a check on live markets, how they're setting it up uh, for them to kick off in about 25 minutes. Remember, uh, sort of the end of last week was uh, Thanksgiving in the US. So there was little to no trading there for those couple of days. So, uh, um, you know, we'll be expecting a kind of a bit of a, a surge when markets return um, today. So we'll be uh, able to take a little look at that. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name's Paul. Okay, traded for many years, traded for funds, traded for clients. Uh, primarily, I like to focus on FX indices and commodities, uh, and I tend to be a trend trader, okay, for my sort of longer term trading, and I tend to be a reversal trader for my shorter term um, trading. So uh, uh, Brendan says, assuming false breakout is the same as an up thrust. Uh, yes, I use it. Yes, yep, that's um, that's uh, that's that's correct, Brendan. Okay, yep, that's correct. And so uh, um, uh, depending upon depending upon your your background and your trading experience, you may have different labels for effectively the the sort of same setup, the same idea, uh, and that's absolutely fine. Um, uh, for those of you who've been here before, will know that. Um, I'm not too caught up on on the actual label, you know, what you choose to call the setup or the or the candle or the indicator. It, the important thing is that you actually know what it is, you understand what it's trying to to tell you, and and actually how you utilize it in your own trading. That's that's those are the those are the important elements. 
So um, I appreciate there might be people uh, you know new to the Monthly Market Matters webinars. It's literally our regular webinar series. Start the week in the right way, okay? Help being to sort of you know put everyone into the right frame as we prepare for the opening of the US uh, market. So each Monday at two o'clock London time, we look to cover um, a bit insight into the news, mostly a piece on education. Always checking about the, the tools that you have access to as an active trades client uh, and then look at the live markets, okay, at the start of the, uh, the US session. So there is um, always plenty for us to cover, always plenty for us to, uh, to, to discuss and talk about. So um, let's, uh, let's kick off with having a little chat about the news. And uh, I know if you've joined us for every one, you might get a little bit frustrated, but, you know, I, I say at the start of every week that, um, you know, as a trader, if you're new to trading, and, you know, I don't expect you to be able to maybe analyze the economic data, but it is important that you know when that economic data is coming out, because especially if it's big data, you know, it may well induce volatility into the markets and volatility is a bit of a double edged sword. OK, you know, um, we, you know, we need good volatility to be able to, to get trading opportunities, but equally, you know, if it's the uh, if you're on the wrong side of volatility, that can make things challenging. And so yeah, it's important that, you know, when the uh, economic news is coming out. And you can find out about that on an economic calendar. There, was, there is an economic calendar on the Active Trades website there that will actually give you help and insight. And, you know, there are other ones also available on the internet, so there's no excuse. But as I said, it's important to know, you know, um, what data is coming out, spe specifically, you know, for the instruments you're trading. And also to understand what, if any, impact they may well have. So. Um, it's an interesting week this week because we've got quite there's quite a bit of data coming out and then you know there'll, there'll be lots for for the analysts um and investors and traders to get interested in um and, you know in particular we've also had a we've also got a few of the uh, central bankers um speaking this week so you know mr i think mr powell speaking also uh, mr uh, bailey and uh, throughout the week <clears throat> excuse me um, uh, and we also have, you know, elements of uh, data coming out. So, for example, you can see today, like new home sales and uh, the Dallas Fed manufacturing. Tomorrow, we get insight into German consumer confidence. Okay, and that starts to be of relevance as people want to see, you know, the kind of the, the health of the uh, the German economy because, of course, it has such an important impact upon the overall eurozone um, economy and, and confidence. Um, Australia has its uh, CPI, okay, uh, along with the Royal Bank of New Zealand has their monetary policy meeting. Um, you know, most people at the moment, the the sort of the expectation would be that there will be no change in that policy. There will be no sort of rise or uh, lowering of interest rates. Uh, and of course, with all of these news elements, it's it's the you know the if you want to sum them up in a single word, it's normally expectation. And so you know, does the you know does does the the news meet the expectation prior? Because if it doesn't, so in terms of like an interest rate rise or a policy committee meeting, you know, if if they choose to raise or lower interest or choose not to, and people are expecting. Uh, you know, have a different expectation. That's where you know major volatility can be induced. So it's always worth knowing, as I said, when that news is coming out, and also what the expectation is. Um, you can also see that you've got U.S. GDP um, for the third quarter. But um, I think um, what most people will be taking an interest in is on Thursday uh, we have the U.S. PCE price index. Okay, and and the reason traders and investors will take a, a, an enthusiastic look at that is because this is Mr. Powell, the uh, the sort of a head of the Federal Reserve, and um, it's his preferred indicator to to understand whether the uh, whether he is winning his battle against inflation in the uh, in the US uh, economy because it looks at it looks at personal consumer sort of um uh, expenditure uh, i think i think it sort of it cuts out food and energy which can be quite volatile so it gives him an insight into how confident or how comfortable the uh, the the us consumer is uh, and that is what drives some of his decisions with regards to you know, their own uh, policy committee meetings so that is one of the things that traders will be looking at on Thursday, okay, and then taking interest to see how that comes out. Uh, and then we finish the we finish the week with a little bit of uh, 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 US releasing its manufacturing PMIs uh, and also Canada publishing its employment data. So there was a lot coming out this week, okay. There was you know there's a lot and there's there's something for everybody. And as always, as I say, it's just important to make sure that you know you know what days they're coming out and what times they're coming out so that you can plan yourself accordingly. Thank you.
So um, having looked at news, why don't we uh, focus on our main element, which is all about, you know, taking advantage of false breakouts. Um, and as the, the slide says, uh, many traders like to trade breakouts of ranges as their main method of engaging with markets. And, you know, the thing with breakouts is when they work, um, they can work very, very well. Um, but they do not work all the time. And, and it would be one of my personal trading beliefs is that you know certainly within fx markets um you know uh, breakouts can fail quite uh, quite a great deal and the important thing is to understand is when they fail that actually can present us with an opportunity if we are educated and if we know what we're looking for if we know how to to, um, to act and engage with markets so um that's what we're going to focus on but um Let's put a uh, let's put a little bit of context in place, shall we? First, by reminding ourselves of the main trading styles. And as I said, this might well be more helpful for people who are completely new to to, to trading. So, um, you know, what I would suggest and talk about to people is that you know, if you go onto the internet and, and look for trading and investing methods, um, you, you know, you will find thousands on there okay there is thousands on there you know some free some very expensive but there are thousands of different trading and investing methods um when you boil them down though my suggestion would be that they kind of mostly most of them boil down to one of two styles you are either trading a break of a line of support resistance or you're trading a bounce off a line of support resistance now there's lots of different ways and there's lots of different variations there's lots of nuances and there's lots of different styles but ultimately when you break it down that's what you're, tra you're trading a break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off a line of support resistance and if you can understand that at its most basic concept well that can actually help you just help you just gain a bit of clarity help you cut through the noise and cut through the nonsense all right and actually just focus on the important elements of whether it be the market or whether it be the the, the method that you're looking to employ so you know um if we look at you know break of a level of support resistance it just i think this is just a very uh, simple you know most of us when we're looking at chart and it doesn't matter this is dollar yen 50 minute it, it, it could be dollar yen 15 minute it could be euro on the monthly it could be gold on the hourly you know it doesn't it doesn't really matter in the sense of it's fractal namely that you know if you're looking at charts most people will be identifying either long term or short term you know support and uh, resistance and, and really what you're looking for is as i said it's it's at the end here when price breaks out okay it's a break of in this case the the line of support and that's just one style of trading okay you can, as i said there's lots of nuances but you can break it down to you're trading a break of a level of support resistance you know or you're trading a bounce off a level of support resistance so and this is a chart of the, the euro dollar on the uh, the daily and uh, you can see that it's you know it's over several months all right uh, and it's actually you know the price is in a very clear downtrend and it's actually in this case whenever price pulls back to okay in this particular case a level of resistance whether that be dynamic resistance from the the red 50 period moving average okay or the blue 20 period uh, or a, at a, a kind of drawn in significant level of uh, support resistance you know that's what we're looking for as we can actually see is that in this case you know price bouncing you know on a several occasions off the 50 period moving average okay and the 50 period moving average is acting as what we would call dynamic resistance dynamic resistance because it's constantly changing as the 50 period moving average or, or whatever other moving average you choose you know as that updates with more data you know and it will move and change and so we would call that dynamic um support resistance as opposed to just a you know a horizontal level drawn in you know which might be a horizontal level from let's say um like a big round number like you know two thousand dollars in gold at the moment okay so it's just about understanding um as i said you know most trading methods it's either a break of a line of support or resistance or a bounce off a level of support or resistance when you break it when you break it down uh, and of course, you know it can be the same. Uh, and I, uh, I, I quite often put this chart because I think it's a, I think it's a great chart because actually this was this was the Kiwi dollar uh, on the against the Japanese yen over the weekly time frame. So even candle, every candle's a week. Uh, and actually, what we saw was that you know um, a price pretty much went with 
within a range, okay, for you know approximately nearly four years. But within those four years, you can see that basically, you know, it bounced off. Uh, horizontal support, okay, you know, at 58, and, and horizontal resistance there, okay, at 69, and for pretty much, as I said, for almost four years, okay, it broke through that until until what happened is that actually, you know, it finally it finally broke out, okay, it finally broke out, it came back and test and bounce, uh, and then took off in a uh, in a new trend, and so. As I said, it, 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 but being able to understand this concept and, and take it on board, okay, as I said, doesn't really matter whether you're trading five-minute charts or monthly charts. It's about being able to sort of just understand the price action concept uh, and, be, and being comfortable with it and, and recognizing, you know, which kind of environment are you in and, and you know, how, you know, how do you, uh, how do you adapt to the kind of, to the uh, environment you find yourself in? So, um, when it comes to turning trading breakouts or bounces, they both have their pros and cons. Okay, neither are perfect. It is about finding which one can you consistently follow and trade for, let's say, samples of the next twenty trades. So, some people prefer trading breakouts. Some people prefer trading bounces. Uh, personally, uh, I prefer trading bounces as as part of a pullback in an existing trend. That's that's certainly for my kind of let's say my longer term trading. That's what I like to uh, that's what I like to see. Okay. Other people will like to just trade clear breakouts. And as I said, that's absolutely fine. Okay. It is about knowing which one works best for you. So some people can trade both. Okay. Um, but I think what you will find is that maybe at the start of your trading career, you might try and trade both. But, you know, as you, as you collect the data, you'll start to find which one kind of particularly um, suits you better than the, uh, the other. So, as I said, I prefer bounces as part of a pullback in a trend because um, I believe for me, it gives me a, a, an opportunity to enter at a better price. So, for example, my trade risk is likely to be small. And by my trade risk being small, my ability to generate an asymmetric reward to risk on my trade is, is improved. And this also might sound a bit strange to new traders, but also, uh, you know, on trading a bounce as part of a pullback. I know if I'm wrong, far, far sooner. And actually, I would far sooner that, okay? If, if my trade idea isn't going to work out, I'd sooner know as quickly as possible so I can cut the trade, I can step away from it, I can reset, uh, and then basically re-engage as and when and if is required, which I know some people might find a bit strange, but if I'm going to be wrong, I'd sooner know I'm wrong as quickly as possible so I can do what needs to be done to, to basically to cut my loss and reset myself. So, as I said, I prefer to trade bounces. However, I also love it trading a breakout when it fails. And, and once again, this is my personal trading belief, is that, you know, lots of breakouts failed. I believe, especially in the FX market, and this is about turning it from what could be a threat, turning it into a, an opportunity. And that's what we're going to talk more about. So, you know, uh, as I said there, breakouts fail all the time, okay, especially in FX markets. Now, some people might differ and say, well, actually, breakouts are fabulous in, in equities, Paul, you know, in stock markets, uh, and they may well be right, and that's absolutely, that's absolutely fine. As I said, part of it is understanding what type of trading style suits you, also the environment you find yourself in, and, and also, you know, what instruments, okay, what asset classes. So as I said, a lot of my trading is FX, and so, you know, I can call upon all that experience. Uh, and my view is that, you know, lots of breakouts will fail in the FX markets. And so if you're a breakout trader, if, you know, generally you tend to sort of, that's the way you like to operate, well, you know, uh, you know a failed breakout means, you know, it's a, it's a failed trade or a failed trader. However, all right. However, ladies and gentlemen, for a, for a patient and educated trader, it also offers us an opportunity. So that's what we're going to talk about. Let's take a look at how we could trade these false breakouts, which you'll sometimes hear other traders calling a fake out. OK, and once again, I'm, I'm you know, as I said earlier, I don't really mind too much how you label it, whether you want to label it a false breakout or a fake out or, you know, a, a spring or an up thrust, etc. I, I, I don't I don't mind how you label it. The important thing is you understand what it is, what it's representing and, and most importantly, how you can turn it into a into a trade plan for yourself. That, that's the that's the real that's the real key element. 
So here we go. I'm going to share with you just a very simple false breakout strategy for both for both buyers and sellers. OK, and uh, let's get the old uh, pen up here. So this is a very simple false breakout short setup. All right. Uh, and then for this, you know, we're going to look for primarily the, the, the daily chart. Now, as I said, um, I will do a specific session in the future on intraday fault breakouts, but I think as a starting point, this is kind of a, a it's a nice, sensible starting point for traders to look at because if you can identify the setup on the daily chart where you know you're not under the the same time pressure as let's say a five minute chart, if you can identify the setup and understand it, well then basically then you're in a good position. Okay, then you know that allows you to as you as you get better at it, you'll realize what it is you're looking for and, and actually how you can look to trade it. So on the daily chart. What we're looking for is a minimum, a minimum of two touches of resistance, preferably three to four touches, but it has to be at least two. OK, then what we see is price then breaks the level. And it doesn't have to break it by, you know, it doesn't have to break it by a certain amount. It could be one pip, it could be 10 pips, it could be 50 pips, depending upon the particular instrument. But price then breaks that level. But most importantly, ends up with a bearish close below the level. OK, even better if it is a rejection candle. So something like a, a pin bar, OK, so you know, a hammer or a shooting star, however you label it. Maybe it's like an engulfing candle or an outside bar or it's like a key reversal candle. OK, that creates a false breakout. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to sell at the next session at the next day. So um, in a particular case like here, you know, we've had a level here. We touched it here. OK, you know, we've touched this this level here. And, and here's the thing. Sometimes it will be very clear. Maybe it's a big round number. Otherwise, it's not. And it doesn't have to be. What we're just looking for is, remember, two touches of resistance in this case. OK, here's the first touch, the second touch. And we get the third touch. Uh, and then basically what we also get is the in that case is the fourth touch. And, and the important thing is, is that basically a price in this particular one here, you might be able to say it just nipped its way, it nipped its way you know, a few pips further, and then basically printed a bearish close, okay? Printed a bearish close. And it was also a very clear rejection candle because not only um, not only was it, you know, did it like false breakout, but what you can also see is that, you know, we, we pushed up, we rolled over, and we closed beneath the, the lows of the, in fact, you know, the previous four candles. That, to me, is what they would call a key reversal candle. Price has pushed to new highs, rolled over, and closed beneath the lows. Uh, and then, you know, what, as I said, what you're looking to is you're looking to an opportunity you'd be looking to sell the next day, uh, working its way down, making sure you have a decent um, reward to risk. So that is just simple, false breakout, okay? You're looking for price on the daily chart of a minimum of at least two touches of resistance, preferably three to four. Price then breaks the level, but there's no, there's no, you know, it can break it by one pip, okay? You know, it doesn't have to break it by hundreds. It can break it by one, you know, 10, 20, 50, etc. The important thing is, all right, is that price, despite breaking through, let me just clear this out, make this a little bit uh, clearer. You know, in this particular case, I mean, price breaks through, but actually what happens is it rolls down beneath it and we have a bearish close okay below the, the level and it's even better if it is a rejection candle that is what's created the false breaker because it's looked like it's basically going to break through and break out to new highs and it doesn't okay it's it's almost like a uh, you know if, if like me you know uh, in, you know in your youth you played you know team sports okay things like uh, you know football rugby hockey all of which are played it's, it's like the you know i played as a winger left winger and well, in fact, in football, rugby and hockey, you know, it's it's almost like the uh, kind of uh, dropping the shoulder to faint past the, the defender. Okay, you you look uh, you're looking as if price is going to go one way, right? Like a wing, you look like price is going to go one way, but actually, you you drop the shoulder and you faint and you actually go in the other direction. Okay, and that's what you know. That's what basically you know sends the defender the wrong way. And in this case, that's what you know the market is trying to do. Okay, it's trying to take all these bullish breakout traders and get them to buy in but actually it does the opposite okay and, and we head in a different direction and stuff and so once you practice looking for these you know then it starts to become quite an interesting uh, quite an interesting uh, um uh, uh setup right you know to, to be able to see how it's uh, how it's particularly playing out in markets 
Um, so yeah, I think I've got a, yeah, a couple of ex examples. Well, you know, there's just one good example here: dollar, dollar Canadian dollar. Okay, just looked at. Okay, just looking at the uh, particular levels, and then invariably, what we have is you know we push up. Okay, you know we have a bit of a breakout. It looks like it's going to break out, but during that day, it rolls over and falls back, and it closes. Okay, so bearish close beneath the high. That is a short opportunity. Okay, an opportunity to um, to, to to ride the trade further south. That's that's what we are. That's what we are particularly yet uh, looking for. Okay, so you know you might actually notice here there is a, a version of a break here, but that you know that's a. That's it's a bullish breakout. We're just going to look at. We're just going to look at you know um, uh, bearish false breakouts. Okay, all right. That's what we'll just look at for the first couple of slides, and then we will revisit other opportunities. But the important thing is, as I said, can I identify you know where there's been at least two, maybe three, four, preferably touches of a uh, of a level. Then we get a a false breakout. Price pushes just a little bit high. It only has to be by a pip or two, and then it rolls over. And importantly, we get a bearish close beneath that level. All right, the market has looked like it's going to go one way. Right, and they send you, you know, send you one way, and then actually takes off in another direction, uh, and that's what um, that's you know that is the false breakout, and that's what we're particularly looking um, to achieve. Um, example here, okay, on the uh, um, euro, uh, euro yen, okay. So uh, um, uh, just here we go. Let's get the old drawing tool here. So uh, euro yen, okay. So uh, hopefully you can see here, you know, we had a, you know. Price price was in a very nice uptrend. Okay, price has a uh, has a high. Price falls away from it. Price comes back up to it. And now, interestingly, you know, we we, we touch it, uh, and and very aggressive traders might say, "Well, actually, Paul, that's enough for me." But remember, what we want is at least two, preferably three or four. On this day, what we see is that the next day is the price does push higher. And it closed, but and it closes beneath the level, but it's not really a bearish close. It's still kind of a you know, still you know, still a bullish candle. That's okay in terms of where it is, and it's the following day where actually price pushes up against this level, and also what it does is it tries to push up and then it rolls and then it basically closes beneath that level. And it's a bearish close beneath that level. It is also okay. You know, I would I would look at that as being a bearish pin bar. Some people would call it a hammer. Some people might call it a shooting star, etc. That's you know, as I said, I'm not you know caught up on how you label it. It's about can you recognise what is actually uh, um, is what actually happened. Okay, so um, let me just clear this out. Let's just clear these drawers out. So there's a couple of questions there. So uh, Dave says, "Hi Paul, where do you place your stop back above the previous uh, uh, resistance level?" Uh, absolutely spot on. Dave, so in this particular example, you know, you'd be looking to to basically be short here, and then your stop would be above, you know, the the, the recent highs. Okay, and on the daily chart, um, I normally suggest them you know, around about ten pips. Okay, that's just to make sure you're covering things like uh, spreads and and any kind of any kind of false breakouts. Okay, but um, just you know, naturally, that's where it would sit. Uh, and then on the targeting side, well, um, it, people, you know, people. Will have their own views on on targeting exits. What I always say is that you know we're looking for asymmetric reward to risk. That that's actually what we're looking for. Okay, asymmetric reward to risk. So if you like to have a uh, a target, that means you know you're really looking for a kind of two to one uh, and above. If you like to trail, well, you know it's making sure that you have a very simple trailing stop strategy. So you might be in, you know, if you're in bearish trades, you might just be above the last bullish swings, okay, or maybe you use above the last bullish fractals, or maybe you use thing like the parabolic um, SAR indicator if you just want something very, very uh, simple and consistent. But um, that's what we're looking for, okay. You know, once you've identified it, you know your entries, you know you're in this case you're selling it the next day, and your stop would go above the the recent high okay that's where that's where we particularly look at doesn't need to be um you know as i said you know we're just trying to keep it a nice simple setup here okay and uh, and the thing is once your eyes are you know let's say attuned to sort of seeing you know both bullish and um, bullish and bearish you know uh, false breakouts you know you start to get interested in kind of you know the prices moving around places like this here but we'll, we'll we shall uh, but we shall uh, look at that in a moment okay even even you know when it comes back on the on the other side but um we'll just uh we'll come back to that in a moment so um, i hope that answers your question dave good 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 question you just uh, you just beat me to the draw a little bit there so that was um you know the uh, kind of bearish short false breakout setup of course then we have to look at the other side of that which is the uh, uh simple uh simple false breakout long setup all right and and it's you know it's just um we're just flipping it on its head really so 
we start as you just start to understand okay to to have a a daily chart okay that's what we're uh, looking to focus on and we are looking for a minimum of two touches of support okay two touches of support but preferably three to four touches okay you know the, the sort of you know the the more touches the 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 better okay but ideally at least two touches then what we want to see is that price clearly breaks the level okay it clearly breaks the level all right doesn't need to say so doesn't need to break it by hundreds of pips it could just be even a couple of pips the important thing is it, it breaks the level but it ends up with a bullish close okay you know a bullish close above the level that is what you need to see okay that is what you need to see and it's even better if it is a rejection candle so maybe it is a bullish pin bar okay or a, you know a, a shooting star or it's a bullish engulfing candle, okay, bullish outside bar, okay, or bullish key reversal candle. That's even better because if when when that has happened, what's happened is we have created that false breakout, uh, and we are looking to be a buyer the next day. Uh, and then what will happen is our stop goes beneath the low. So in this particular case here, um, you know we can see that you know prices, you know, it's, on the daily chart has been touching this level, okay, and then we have here this day where we push. We push down beneath, but actually what happens is we roll all the way. And, you know, we have a, a bullish close. And not only that, but that is a is a bullish engulfing candle, okay, for the, the last couple of days. So, you know, we have basically had a false breakout, bullish engulfing candle, okay. Uh, and so really we're looking to be a buyer the next day because this is the daily chart. Uh, and our stop would be, you know, five to ten pips beneath the uh, beneath the low. All right. So there's always a stop loss because that is a that's a very natural, it's a very natural place for us to have our stop loss because if if price was to trade down at three, which it could do, well then our our idea is no longer valid. And if and if our idea is no longer valid, why do we want to be in the why do we want to be in the trade? And then as I said, asymmetric rewards risk. You're looking for the opportunity to generate you know kind of two to one and above based upon your own based upon your own risk appetite. So as I said, it's you know it's it's just the the short setup, okay. You know, bearish false breakout just flipped on its head, okay. Looking, and we're looking for long setups, okay. We're looking for uh, to 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 do that, okay. Uh, and you know, there's an example here. There's a few examples here. So you know, some people might say, well, Paul, you know, we've just looked about you know a, a you know bearish setup. Yeah, you could, you know, and we did it here, uh, and you're absolutely right. Um, my only challenge is that I, I would not have traded that because just because the candle is so the candle is so huge. Now, yes, of course, we can see that the candle, you know, the price did move down, but that's that's by the by. When the candle is so big, that would mean my trade risk was massive, so the price wouldn't have had to have moved so far to be able to to be able to to make it work. But we're here looking for for um, bullish, okay, false breakout. So we have here, you know, we have the price touches this level. Okay, we've had one touch, two touch, and then on this particular day here, in a kind of an interesting, in an interesting day, we actually open up, okay, beneath the level, we push down, okay, and, you know, you know, we push down, you know, a, a good few pips, about 40, 50 pips, but actually what happens is that day, it turns around and we get a really strong bullish close above back above that level, okay, back above that level, and that is, you know, that's where we've seen like a couple of points and. Uh, a couple of moves um on that okay so it's uh, uh paul says you know uh, what would you say is max size of candle not to trade good question so um with that in mind what i would be looking at is uh, sometimes uh, paul you know it's let's clear this off clear this, clear this off. sometimes okay uh you know it can the candle is so visually huge that you know it just it stands out okay it's clearly very evident off that the, the candle is just too big which means that you're Trade risk will be large in terms of the number of pips in your uh, between your entry and your exit, your stop loss, which means the price has to move so far to to help you um, generate a you know a decent reward to risk. Other times, it, you know, it, you might be a little bit closer and stuff. And so, in in those days when you're not maybe sure, um, this is where I would look at the average true range indicator, the ATR indicator. So, you know, if the ATR indicator for one of a for one of a word says that you know that the you know the average true range on the daily chart okay daily candles is is 100 pips and you know the, the candle you're looking at is maybe 105 pips well i you know i'd be saying that's you know that's fine it's around about the average uh, average range 
if the average range is still 100 pips and you're on a candle is, you know, I don't know, or, you know, 180, 200, 250 pips, well, then clearly, you know, it, it's bigger than the average range. And, 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 you know, and in that example, that kind of hypothetical example, it would, you would see it visually on the chart in, um, in particularly in front of you. So, but what we're looking for is, you know, is there the opportunity for us to, to, to take our trade and, 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 uh, you know, on that daily chart and, and give us the opportunity, excuse me, and give us the opportunity to, to head back towards a, a level that might make for a, a decent level that also gives us providers with a solid reward to risk on our uh, on our trade setups. So I hope that uh, answers your question. Good question. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. And um, uh, also here, you know, this is a, a few examples here, just on kind of this is euro dollar on the daily chart. And, and you probably can maybe uh, see that, uh, you know, in fact, you know, we have, um, you know, not unsurprisingly, we had this, you know, big round number. OK, the big round number can be a level in itself. And, you know, I always say that, you know, we've just talked about it earlier about, you know, gold at 2000 all in this particular, you know, in this particular one. All right. The 110 level. And, and hopefully you can see that actually, you know, we're you know, price clearly pivots price clearly pivots around us okay uh, and you know what we see here okay is at that level you know the next day you know what we get is we get a uh, a candle that basically is also um you know a it's a bullish rejection candle it's a bullish pin bar okay it's a bullish engulfing candle price runs up and then price actually comes back down to this level here okay and we can see that it's testing it but it's here okay that actually what we get is you know for me you get a a nice rejection candle okay you're getting a nice rejection candle that invariably sort of shows that um, you know what we're looking for is is that um you know it's once again it's a false breakout of the 110 level all right and we can see the price does make its nice move we come down here and this is one you know where it might actually have been a challenge for some people is that you know here you know you'd be looking at actually you know, a level that has been touched before and bounced off, you know, when you see here a rejection candle there, you'd probably be very, very, you know, you'd be very pleased about that. And you might be looking to be a buyer on that. And this is why I normally say about have about, you know, 10 pips on your stop loss beneath, because actually, you know, if you didn't, if you have it just at the, the low of the candle, well, then you might have basically been uh, whipped out the, the previous day. And so, uh, sorry, the next day, my apologies, the next day where, very, you know, it, it is it is a false breakout, but what we don't have is you know we you know we we have a you remember for a false breakout we are looking for a bullish close. This is this is a still a bearish close, okay? So um, you know we are when you're beginning looking at false breakouts, you know when you're trading a a bullish false breakout price, you know needs to break the level and have a bullish close back above the level, okay? That's what we're looking for. So uh, and as you can see for the next couple of days, it does it does pop its way. Um, up there and along. Um, so yeah, I've got I've picked a few examples out here from all some kind of clear ones over the uh, over the years, etc. Just to you know give people you know the kind of good visual indicator of what we can see. Um, so this was a pound against a dollar. Um, this one was a uh, this one was also you know we kind of had the one twenty five level and um, price had come down to it. Okay, price had come down to the to the. The, to the level of it uh, and then actually you know it was a couple of weeks later all right that price basically came down back down to this 125 okay level we've touched a couple of times before this is the third touch it goes beneath it but it rallies all the way up and it closes back up above it and you know what is it you know it is also a very you know it's a little bit bigger than normal but it is a very strong bullish rejection candle okay and very strong uh, what i would call a bullish pinball uh, and then you know we you know we know that basically we've had you know a level here which is also where the 200 period moving average is coming in so you know you'd be looking to buy the next day stop loss beneath the uh, the low but knowing that also even into this region here okay the 200 period moving average and previous highs that is a that is a good target that gives you that asymmetric two to one reward to risk on your trades okay so it's um it's uh, yeah you know it's, it's it's when you the good thing about it is when you're doing this on the daily chart you know you can do it as part of your analysis you know it, but it means you, you don't need to be sat in front of the charts all day to recognize the the trade setup you don't need to to you know to constantly be sat there waiting for um waiting for the you know the entry etc you know this is just if you're doing your good analysis on a you know on a, whether it be in the evening or whether it be in the mornings just looking at that and just as you know recognize just drawing in levels where you're seeing um same particular moves and set a couple of touches uh, and then very get here your third touch which also is you know 
is a bullish close back up above the level and is also you know a uh, uh, you know it's a very clear bullish rejection candle although that's the sort of thing that gives us the you know the kind of the 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 the, the data the confluence of events to give us a a very good simple trade um trade setup so um, one variation of this that you can uh, take away is that, uh, is, you know, if, if you're looking at this, you know, if you're basically just want to focus on trading your trends, is that uh, kind of help new traders, you know, you might want to look for false breakouts in the direction of an already established trend. Now, um, what I would suggest is, you know, they, they, they don't happen as often as we would like. OK, but um, when they do, they can be you know good ways to, to be able to, to operate. So, uh, uh, you know, hopefully in this case, you can see that, you know, um, the panning is dollars and you know, it's in a downtrend. It is predominantly beneath its moving averages. Yes, there was a nice false bullish breakout here. But what we're particularly interested in is here is that, you know, we've had you know one touch this level, two touch. We've had three touch and we get a, a doji candle, an indecision candle. Uh, but then the next day, the candle the price pushes up above that uh, that level. But it falls back, doesn't it? It falls back and it closes beneath. Okay, it closes beneath. It's a bearish close beneath the level. It is also a bearish engulfing candle. It is also a bearish key reversal candle. It's also a bearish pin bar. You know, so that in itself is providing you with a a you know a a trade setup. Okay, in terms of being able to enter with the established trend. So, um. I think that is a very nice way to trade with an established trend. The, the only challenge you have is that you know they are not as frequent as we would like. That's the that's the thing. So you know, you, you, I would think of that as a uh, uh, I would call that sort of like you know like the the cherry on the cake. Okay, the nice little the topic, but it's not something that you you know you're going to trade only. Okay, yeah, uh, only trade. So. Um, before we switch across to the live markets, okay, um, let's uh, just uh, quickly conclude that, uh, as I said, many traders love to trade breakouts. However, many breakouts fail, especially in the FX markets, I believe. And the thing is, a failed breakout offers an opportunity for us if we are a savvy, educated trader. What I say is that start off on the daily chart, and in particular the FX, or once you've started being able to sort of you know get the cognitive recognition ability to to recognize when you see these false breakouts you will see them happen across all instruments and all time frames uh, and as i said if there is the interest then what i'll do is in one of the future sessions i'll do a specific intraday false breakout as well so there's a kind of a little variation i use on a, on an intraday basis but as i said this is a starting point start on the daily chart start just identifying where you're seeing price hitting a level two, three times, and then looking to see what does the price action give you? Does it give you, you know, a break of that level and then a close back beneath the, uh, the, the you know, the back beneath the level, we'll just try to break out to give us that false breakout. So as I said, look for at least two, you know, two to four touches of a clearly identified level, wait for price to break the level, but close back the other side of the level as your trigger. All right, and as I said, start off on the daily chart, okay? And then as you get used to them, then, you know, you may wish to, to, to well, you, you, I was going to say you may wish to take them down the time scales. You can also take them up the time scales if you like. There were weekly and monthly charts and stuff. And uh, for those of you who are at the uh, I, show on Friday, you'll know that I, know I quite like a, a weekly and a monthly chart. But the important thing is, once you can identify it, all right, once you can see it and, and recognize the, you know, the actual set up uh, you know, and then identify the context within which you find yourself and then it becomes a really nice simple trading uh, method to to be able to to, to work with so um before we switch across to the uh the, the live charts okay let's just uh, a reminder that um next week okay we're into december there and uh, what we'll be seeing is uh, next monday session 4th of december london two o'clock uh, and what i'm going to talk about there in the education element is how, how do we add to our trades okay how do we how do we turn our trades into a position all right and uh, i will explain exactly what that means okay on our next monday session two o'clock london time so you know if you haven't registered yet then of course you know please do so you know either on the website or use the qr qr code here okay and that will take you to the uh, that'll take you to it uh, and as i said that'll be kind of an interesting one especially an interesting one if you were to 
ally it with uh, what we've talked about today in terms of uh, uh, trading false, false breakouts as your uh, as your initial entry. So um, let us switch across to the live charts. Okay, let's have a little look at what's going on in the live market. Okay, and then I might sort of use an example that I talked a little bit about on Friday that might be of uh, benefit to us. Uh, it, and it's a case of, uh, you know, we can talk about that in terms of false breakouts. But um, if you've got any questions or any comments or even any feedback, okay, you know, if there's things you'd like to see me cover in future sessions, by all means do so. But you can contact our English desk, uh, call uh, 0207 6500 567, uh, or more likely email English desk at activetrades.com uh, and they'll be very happy to uh, to help guide you. So if you just bear with us for a moment, what we'll do is I'll switch across to the uh, to the charts and uh, we'll have a look there. So just uh, just please bear with us a moment and we'll switch on to the charts. This is kind of where we're seeing an interesting one where we're seeing false breakouts, but also false breakouts across uh, quite a few correlated instruments and that can be very helpful and very useful for us as well. So. And what I'm going to look at and start with here is, uh, thank you, Ben, uh, is a case of this is the um, this is the dollar index chart. This is the monthly chart, and in particular, what we're going to look at is, um, you know, what we saw here. This was bang. This was back into July of this summer. Okay, and that's what I want you to be able to work out, because actually, what we did do here is, you know, this we had a big round number here, big round number of one. 100 and actually what you might be able to see is you know we didn't we didn't really get down and touch it but in that month we basically came down we broke the big round number but we closed back up above it now um admittedly this was a bearish close but um but you know this was this is you know it was a bullish sign because it had a huge big bullish wick uh wicks in terms of you know indicating that we were going to get a a, a strong move to the upside or we were, there was a higher probability of a good move to the uh, to the upside so uh, and actually if i go down to the weekly chart that's what we you know that's what we saw there on the weekly chart okay and, and you can see for yourself that you know how that how that ran away now and that's all well and good but actually we're looking at well actually how can we you know how can we trade that okay in terms of turning that to a trade idea so um what i'm interested in is correlating how did that correlate with other instruments okay where the false breakouts going on at the same time with other instruments against the us dollar uh, and the most the most certainly was so uh you know two of the very clearer ones were of course the euro dollar now the dollar index okay is of course the dollar against a basket of currencies and i think about 57 percent of it is made up by the euro so you see very often complete inverse correlation between the dollar index and the euro dollar chart so if you remember on the uh dollar index on the monthly chart we saw a uh, you know what what some advanced traders might call actually a bit of a bear trap which is what sets us up with a kind of a false breakout okay uh, and then we were looking for a bullish move afterwards so on the opposite side of the uh opposite side of the table you know this here for this month okay for you know july what we had was we basically you know we had a um we had a break here okay we had a break up above 110 okay the big round number uh, and also the false breakout above the kind of the the weekly 50 period moving average and then we saw we came back and we closed and so you know once again this wasn't even a, a bearish close it was a bullish close but it was a bullish close back beneath that kind of 110 level all right back beneath that weekly 50 and you can see for yourself that actually you know and the monthly wise if i go down to the weekly chart you can see that was the move there and that's what we got for the for the next sort of six well in fact i think about 13 weeks okay we just saw basically the bearish follow through on that if that wasn't enough at the same time okay on the pound against the us dollar here we go same month what we had was you know a price had pushed up that month it had tried to break through uh, the 130 big round number. It couldn't. It also fell back after it tried to, to break through the, the monthly 50 period moving average, but it closed back beneath it. And I said, even though this was even though this was a it was a bullish close, it was clearly you know a, another version of the false breakout that had um, that had occurred. Uh, and as I said in the weekly chart, you can see, you know, we, we had it here on the weekly chart, and then basically, you know, we ran down for that sort of 10, 12 weeks, okay, of, of moving down with it. And um, at the same time, okay, the uh, the Kiwi dollar, okay, the Kiwi dollar, you know, it wasn't necessarily a a uh, false breakout of some levels, but what we'd had was that the, the, we'd had two months highs here, okay, 
I think we need to draw that a little bit closer, but we had at the same time as the dollar index was pushing down and being rejected, uh, Kiwi dollar pushed up and tried to be rejected, but um, but it basically it, uh, it it had it had failed. Uh, that was its move there. Okay, it tried to break out above the 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 highs of the previous months, and then what you can see is that basically it just it just fell away there on the weekly um, on the weekly chart. Uh, and then also on the Australian dollar, okay, and you know we had basically a uh, price pushing up, okay, against the uh, a long term what was a support and resistance level, also against the dynamic resistance of the twenty period moving average, uh, and we had basically tried to push up and would fall and down. Uh, and, you know, and if we look at the, uh, the the kind of the the weekly chart, that's what actually occurred. We can just see the price basically fell down away from it. So um, this is probably a little bit. Um, as I say, it's probably a little bit more of an advanced example, okay, of a false breakout. I wouldn't necessarily be expecting you to see or be able to identify that straight off the cuff, but it is useful on the search, certainly on the longer time frames when you start to be able to sort of correlate where there might be false breakouts occurring across a few correlated instruments, because that in itself is giving you confidence that you know um, that that basically there is a false breakout occurring. Okay, and you know if you're seeing it across several instruments, well, that's just as I said, that's just giving you confidence that perhaps you know maybe you know there might be the the opportunity for you to to be able to trade that either on that instrument uh, on that time frame or on on lower time frames themselves so and um, that is always worth um you know, is always worth keeping an eye on okay i think as i said false breakout it is you know it is literally the 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 market looking like it's going to go one way you know like fainting to go one way and, and then it actually steps off in the other foot takes off in the other direction and once you start to recognize that and start to be able to see that well then that in itself becomes a really useful okay becomes a really useful trading trigger becomes a useful really trading setup and it's very very simple uh, and you're able to understand exactly what the, the kind of market is uh, is looking at and uh, telling you and that that's always useful okay so and um, we've got a couple of minutes left so um as always i like to just basically have a little look at uh, how those us indices have opened up for uh, for the start of this week after last week's session so um just uh, load them up and have a uh, have a little bit of a look so um yeah nasdaq they looking is giving us an example there um so you know we can see that um you know the, the basic prices you know went for the most part just a little bit sideways okay uh, last week and no surprise there no surprise there when you look at that on the uh, based upon that week and how it goes it's more about how we're going to react to that today so let's have a little look at uh, let's go down to the sort of lower time frames so i'm going to go down to the uh, the 30 minute charts here okay across them to see how they are opening up and what we can denote um what i'm interested in is here is you know interestingly um you know what we've had is you know we've opened up here and we can see we've thrust up there and and, and you know this is the previous week's high and what what's happened we've had a bit of a false breakout beneath uh, if, that, if that closes in six minutes that in its way only oh, would be a false breakout of that particular level i'll be looking at that let's just um yeah so i'm just going to go down a little look at the time as i said very often uh, normally i tend to wait 15 to 20 minutes after the uh, the uh, kind of market to opening let the market be uh, do its volatility in which you know it's uh it certainly has been here you can see there on the one minute chart it rallied its way up hit those previous days highs previous weeks highs and has come back down from it okay so um you know i'd be uh, uh you know i'd be just you know, wait and see how that particularly plays out. So that's that's what uh, the Dow is doing. If we look at uh, Nasdaq, Nasdaq itself is you know we can see the kind of thirty minute chart there. It is. Let's just have let's give that a little bit time frame. Yeah. So uh, you know when it, it's opened, it's pushed up to those levels and come back all the way back down. You can see there's there's that has that range was at seventy seventy to. 36 so um, so so yeah so you know it, it's been in a kind of a 60 handle range okay you know we looked at that 60 handle range to open that's quite you know it's quite a big wide range as a reflection of the you know how we've had a couple of days of quiet trading so everybody's kind of coming back to their desk now uh, and so we'll be expecting to see how that particularly uh, plays out s p 500 is uh and again, I'm just looking at the daily chart there. You know, it's the daily chart, yeah. A couple of days of not really much happening. Um, and, you know, and so far, what we're seeing is that it's just, just looking at the, on the lower time frames. Yeah, you can see that, you know, we, we've opened here, pushed up. And, you know, we're actually, you'd be saying this, what we're looking at here is, 
hopefully you can see this kind of you know the the highs of the day so far it's pushed through there and actually it's fallen down there and if four minutes time we get a low close that you've done it's halfway you've been looking at as that's a false break we had a false break out to the, those highs and we're pushing down if that if we get a bearish close um if we get a bearish close off that certainly the 15 minute chart okay you can see you know it pushed above those 50 minutes you've got one two three at least three maybe four you know touches where we've pushed up and come down okay that's that's people will be looking at that five minute chart yeah you can see the kind of the the level there and how it pushed up its way through it come down and it's closed it so it's no surprise that people might have a bit of a a bearish um a bearish sentiment to begin with the session but as i said remember i normally kind of like to sort of leave it for uh for the first 15 to 20 minutes especially after you know something like we're a couple of days off because it, you know invariably what you start to see is is the uh is the you know is the kind of volatility coming in at the start so what i normally suggest to new traders is just actually you know even leave it for the first half an hour let the market decide where it wants to uh, where it wants to work where and where it wants to go uh, and then it starts to become a little bit clearer about what its direction is and, and with that that is what we can uh, that's what we can particularly uh, work at so yeah you know, if there's no to me if there's been a couple of nice little false breakouts there but there's no there's no absolute clear direction right from the offer you know i think we might have to wait another uh, um 10 15 minutes to get some indication of uh, of that after the couple of days off and stuff so just make sure that you uh, keep your powder dry and watch yourself as you were uh, if you were uh, if you look to engage in these kind of markets uh, on a on an intraday basis <laughs> Okay, then, ladies and gentlemen, that um, that probably brings us to an end of uh, the session. Okay, the uh, one hour always it always kind of passes very very quickly. You know, as they say, time flies when you're having fun. Um, I hope that you have found that uh, a useful session today. I hope that's just given you a little bit of insight into what a false breakout is and actually how you can turn it from a threat into an opportunity and what you're actually uh, particularly looking for. Uh, and I hope you can uh, work with that. Uh, and I hope that gives you something to take away and start to look at in your own trading going forward this week. Um, as always, remember that um, you know we'll be back here next Monday. I'm going to look about how you you know turn your trade into building it into a position. That's what we'll look at then. Uh, and as always, you know I uh, I wish you uh, have a fabulous um, fabulous trading week, and uh, I will see you uh, soon. Uh, Brennan says, "Can we get the slides for this, please?" Um, the the, uh, the the strategy. Um, I, if you've emailed, okay, I will uh, I will look to respond to that. Um, there is a recording of that on the um, uh, on the webinar archive, okay, on the Active Trades website. If you have a look on that, Dave, you should uh, you should find that um, you should find that there also. Um, great to have you there. Okay, uh, have a fabulous trading week, everybody, and I will uh, I will speak to you next Monday. Take care, everybody. Cheers.